Hey everybody, this is your girl Queen Larika. This here is Confessions 3. And this story is about when my mama first had her breakdown. I remember one day that me and my brother Marvin, we was in the backyard and we was we was on a seesaw. Me and him, we had made a seesaw outside. So we seen our mama come from the backyard, come from out of the house. She was throwing up. And, that, you know, I was kind of afraid because I never saw her throw up. So I went back there where she was and I asked her, I, I said, are you OK? And she had on a, a bandana on her head. And she leaned against the shed. And she looked up at the sky and said, baby, I don't know what's going on with your mama, but your mama don't feel the same no more. She had tears in her eyes, and I really was scared. So she grabbed me by my hand, and she told me to come with her. So we went into the side of the house, and we went to my grandmama bedroom we sat in the chair that was by the window and she picked me up on her lap and she told me and I would never forget these words she said baby I don't know what's going on with your mama but I just want to let you know that your mama do love you but something is going on with your mama but I want you to make me a promise and you know, as a kid, I didn't know what promise was, what the word promise meant. So I asked her, what is a promise? So she explained to me what was a promise. So I told her, I said, I promise. And she turned me around and looked me in my eyes and she said, make me a promise. I said, okay, mama, I'll make you a promise, whatever it is. And she told me, if she could never speak up for herself, that I would be the one to speak up for her. And I said, Mama, I promise you. After that day, I got my last hug from my mama when she was in her right mind. Every day after that, it was none of that. <laughs> I remember times when I had came to her and when it was just me and her, I, I snuck and, and called her, secretly called her mama. She said, I ain't your mama. I ain't your mama. And that hurted me. But as, at that time, I didn't know that she was only pushing herself back for being a parent because she was going through something psychologically that she couldn't explain and something that she just couldn't explain to me. So that was her way of protecting my feelings. So when my mama was that way, for years that's when the the child molestation from my uncle Aaron had went to an all-time high that's when he started back touching me and all that type of crazy crap and it just it just was so hard to express yourself to your parent when your parent is not mentally there no more and that's why I kept a lot of things bottled up around my family because I was told not to say anything. When a child loves his mama, even though that mama may be your uncle, your uncle's sister, or your auntie's sister, but in your eye, that's your mom. When I was a child, I always wondered, even while I was getting older, I still would ask some of, a lot of my family members, 
why nobody never gave my mama mental help? Why they never took her to, to a place that she could get medication and all this and that? The one answer they always kept telling me ain't nothing wrong with her. <laughs> but I'm knowing something wrong with her. She ain't acting like my mama, even though that's my mama's physical body. I had grew up through the years of being in that household with a, a lot of, of my uncles that used to talk bad about my mama. And sometimes they didn't even know that I was hanging around. But one thing I can tell you, when you're little and your uncles around you, they think that you're just a kid, so your brain ain't going to have no type of no type of uh, remembrance of what happened to you or what they said when you was little. But that's a fucking lie. And as as the years was going by and I got into the streets and all this and that, no matter where I was in life, I always came by to visit my mama. I may wasn't I may not wasn't coming by often because my life was fucked up. I'm dealing with another personality on the inside. I'm trying to hide Larika. I'm out here in these streets, game banging and shit. So my life was just fucked up. I remember one night I came over. That's after my grandmama and them had moved from the country and moved to Clarksdale. And my uncle Willie, he was there. And I came by to see my mama. When I went back to her room, I always greet her the way how I always greet her. I always put my hand on her head and I shake and I say, hey, Jean. And I sit down on the bed beside her. I wasn't in the house five minutes until I heard my grandmama voice going to tell me to get out of there, leave her alone. So I confronted my grandmama about that. I said, why in the world you want me to leave from talking to my mama? She never would come up to an answer. So my Uncle Willie, he came to me. He said, look, I don't want to hear mama voice. You know, just come back uh, another day. I don't feel like hearing her mouth. So I respected that from my Uncle Willie. And I left. And when I left there, in my mentality, I said, it's no, it's, I don't understand why this woman never wanted me to really be close to my own fucking mama. <sighs> of growing up in a house with people like that, people expect you to be this type of way. Uh, to be that type of way or that your mind frame need to be like your actions but nobody ever never knew my real fucking heart but me I always loved my mama I remember one time me and my baby mama we were separating and I ended up moving over there at that time my grandmama died so I was staying over there to get myself together, you know, regrouping. And I noticed that, you know, the house was filled in. You know, ain't nobody taking good care of my mama and all this and that. So I went to the Social Security office in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and reported that. And the Social Security people, they gave me my mom, but my uncle, J ugly ass uncle Jimmy, my uncle Glenn and no telling who else, they went up back to the social security office, went and told them folks something and social security switched it right back to my uncle Glenn. <laughs> if they didn't want my mama, why in the fuck did they fought me against my mama? Only thing I do know, 
far as them being in the community, you can easily paint a fake picture with friends or other relatives, but you're in a family. That's what the mass is not on. They claim to say that they love my mama. They never did. Because if they loved my mama, they would respect my mama as being a fucking human being and gave her some mental fucking help. If they would have respect my mama, they would have respect her children as well. When you grow up in a dysfunctional ass family, like I did, you grow up with a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger, a lot of unanswered questions. And you come to realize when you get older, the answer always been there in your fucking face. They never loved you. They never cared for you. They just dealt with you because you was uh, blood related. <laughs> That's the answer. So when you get these child molesters, these sexual abusers, that's how they pray by picking out the unwanted family members that's in the house. That's how they pick their victims. If you don't gravitate to your children while they kids and all this and that, a predator will come to them. I promise you that. That predator will always try to find a door to touch your baby. Then you have some of these mothers that's been in the street for most of their fucking life then dropped off their kids with Tom, Dick, and Harry just so her motherfucking ass could go out there and go party and suck a dick. And think she living a life while her motherfucking kids getting molested by their uncle or they cousins. That family incest shit been going on for fucking centuries. It's the people who's living with you, they the fucking abusers. They. When you're a kid, that family somehow picks you out of the whole fucking bunch and just start fucking with you when you little. Start saying crazy shit to you. Always yelling at you for no fucking reason. You just being a fucking kid. Because you unwanted. You Your presence is not Wanted in their house amongst their presence. So you have some of these motherfucking uh, abusers molest you when you're young and they molest you for a couple of years, then they stop because you, ma you made a move or, or whatever. But they still come around you, speak to you and all this and that like ain't hey, shit happened thinking that it's all right for them to have done to you like that. Just keep your motherfucking mouth closed. It was normal. No, that shit is not normal. There has been so many women, females, that has been raped by family members, cousins, uh, your, your mama, your grandmama, husbands, and all this and that, all because of what? Because you took your eye off your fucking babies, and that's the truth. If you don't, if you don't embrace your child when they little, a sexual predator gonna come. 
and the mask that they wear would look like normal human beings. The, your favorites, they were those who the ones that they be doing the sexual motherfucking molesting. I could give two fucks about those type of people. And if you, like many, have reached out to me and shared your story to me, I love you. And I truly meant what I said, that you is not alone. You have somebody that is there for you. Queen Larika. People just don't understand the pressure of you growing up in, in this world from a toddler all the way up to a young adult until an adult. And some of, some of y'all are gray hair now. And that shit with that abuser did to you still fucks with your mentality. Still fuck with your feelings. You still can't connect with people. Some people who get molested turn to food as an outlet. So they end up being overweight in life. Then you're hurting yourself. You're getting strokes. You ain't taking care of your body. You ain't taking care of your mental healing. Because they fuck your brain. They traumatize you. I call it voodoo you. Then the peoples that you told to tell you the truth, they know. They knew. But it was a secret of the family. They always have to sweep shit like that under the rug. Know why? Because great grandma and grandma, they was deep in the church. And they there's no one in hell they gonna disrespect Big Mama. That's why they swept it up under the rug. And if you was in the country, like how I was, you have to they have to have this certain type of upscale household that the the husband, whoever is the breadwinner, is is bringing in and taking care of a large family. That's what's the rank back then in those times. So they they didn't never want to have that man, that breadwinner, to look like he ain't raising his hand to his motherfucking house. That's why the shit never went to him. I'm only going to speak the truth on how I fucking feel. There's people that watch my videos and don't even hear the message. Only thing they hearing is that I'm wearing wigs or I got my hair done, I'm wearing earrings, or I'm wearing makeup, but they ain't hearing about me expressing how I'm feeling about child molestation. That I was a victim of it. And that some of the people that watching this fucking video has been a victim of multiple child molestation from multiple people. And I'm speaking out on it. So what is people like us victims to do if you are a victim of child molestation? The main thing I can tell you is to start back loving yourself for who you are on the inside. Start back loving you. Pick yourself up. Pick yourself up. Start back loving you. You don't have to worry about how another person feel because while you worrying about how another person may feel, they ain't even worried about how you fucking felt. So you need to be worrying about you. A lot of families have deep fucking secrets. The second thing you need to do after you Found out how to love yourself again. Start loving life again. How you used to look at life when you was in your innocent stage. Go back to some of the shit that you enjoyed doing before you got touched. The third thing you should do is just woosaw your soul.
cleanse, cleanse your mind, heart, and soul from being separated, of not being connected with that abuser's actions anymore. You are not a little kid anymore. You are a grown woman and a grown man now. You may have different feelings on the inside that you are raised to create a fake lifestyle for yourself as well because you got molested. So you started to form a fake life for yourself, but you thinking, but you telling yourself every day that it's normal. But while you telling yourself every day that it's normal, your soul is so fucking miserable. You go to church and you hear the word of God and the word of God ain't even touching you because your brain fucked up. Your way of reasoning is fucked up. Your emotions is out of, is detached. Then you're giving all this money to the church, but the church ain't even putting nothing to help you psychologically. Only thing the church is doing is trying to teach you scriptures. That's it. And like I said it before, I ain't trying to battle nobody religion. I ain't trying to deal with nobody faith. Only thing I truly represent that I want you to stop believing back in you. Start back believing in you. Because I believe in you. You have, we have fucked our lives up. Because somebody fucked us up. And we didn't have no outlet on how to get this shit corrected. There's no blueprint for a victim of molestation or try to get themselves together. But I searched deep within myself. And I came to realize, since they ain't never loved me, I'm going to start loving myself, period. I'm going to be who the fuck I'm going to be. And that's what the fuck I represent. Larika. Dupree Hoy. If you have these, if you ever had these type of feelings, as you were growing up, that you hang around, if you're a female, you may hung around a lot of girls, but all your girls have boyfriends, but you end up getting you a boyfriend because you don't want the girls to know that you like girls. Or if you're a guy, Lord knows I know, if you're a guy and you hang around boys who got girls, the main thing you're going to do is blend in. You're going to find you a fucking girl. But you may not even, don't even like girls. But you tell yourself and you make yourself to like girls. Because society says that. So you end up going through this false ass story of a life satisfying somebody else instead of satisfying your soul. And that's a fact. I'm not 100% today talking. <laughs> I am not. I am in pain today. <clears throat> but I am compelled to talk to my brothers and sisters that has been sexually assaulted to constantly to encourage you to, 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 to get out of that, that hole, to get out of that frame of mind now. And I'm coming to tell you that you are free. There's no fucking holes on you no more. That person sin made you sin. So you are free from sin. It wasn't our fault. It wasn't your fault. I love you. Stand and walk with me. I meant that. And that's what it's going to be. When you in a family and 
a relative is sexually assaulting you and that person have brothers and sisters, hell yeah, they ain't going to believe you. They not going to believe you for no tea in motherfucking China. Know why? Because you unwanted. You was unwanted there. Some of y'all may have children that may have been, been molested too. So now, in your me mentality, by them being molested now, and that you was molested, you feel like that's a, a curse. But it's not a curse, baby. It's not a curse. What it is, what I call it, I call it a fucking contagion ass spirit that's followed you from one form of your life into the next. If it ain't touching you no more, best believe it's gonna try to touch your fucking kids or somebody who you closely love that is a baby. The abusers, when they molesting you, they get cockier and cockier while they sexually assaulting you. They get more devious and planning how to really trap you in that room or trying to trap you on that dark road or trying to get you drunk and all that type of shit so they could take advantage of you. Now's the time to start teaching and protecting your fucking grandchildren. Now's the time to start teaching your fucking children. Now's the time to start teaching your fucking nieces and nephews about family. Because family ain't all what it's cracked up to be. And you know I'm telling the truth. I don't give a fuck how much your family make. I don't give a fuck about the money that they have. If they molest the kids, you need to warn them from them. Because if a person touch you in their blood relative, they not your fucking blood relative if they touching and molesting you. They the enemy. How in the world could these people, as I speak on, that is great hair now, could constantly go to church? And they know that they wild, crazy looking ass son or they wild ass, crazy ass cousins along with girls or along with boys. They know best believe while they going to school, the abusers and with their brothers and sisters, I promise you the friends, the friends observing that person and with, while this person was at school, something is off about this, this person. Until somebody like me come on out and it'd be like, damn, something was wrong with that boy in school. Something was off about him. Hell yeah, something been wrong with this motherfucker since he came out of my grandmama pussy. But they want to try to have it so that he was normal. And that me, my mom, and my brother, we was abnormal. As a child being molested, you think about suicide so many times in your life. Even while you young, while you're a teenager, while you're a young adult, you could even still think about suicide even when you gray haired. It's a fact. You get on drugs, you start hoeing, you prostitute, you get in the streets, start gang banging. You don't give a fuck about school or how you dress no more. You give up. And the, and the shit that I call, I call that self destruction. You're trying to destroy yourself because you hurt and mad and there's no outlet for you to release it. So you hurt yourself and you punish yourself. 
feeling guilty for yourself because there was nobody there to help you. But I understand the pain and I understand the mentality and the feelings of going through this shit with y'all. I am with you 100%. Some people want to post my videos but can't share my videos because if they share and their family knows, the family going to question them by posting that. You got to stand strong in this shit because the message got to get out there. There's no more room for letting these people get away with this shit. There's no more room for that. You got to see God for yourself one day too, boo. I'm getting short-winded. So I'm gonna end this video right here by saying, I love you. And that when I speak for you, I speak for you from the heart. I'm supposed to be laying in my bed now because I just got out of surgery fry. But somebody needed to hear this. Somebody needed to watch this fucking video because you had, you on your last legs with this shit. Your brain is not resting. Your household is fucking under control. Your kids don't even fucking love you no more. Take the time out and start loving yourself. That's the message for this one. If y'all want to donate to me, y'all can cash out me at dollar sign one five H O Y. Thank you. I love you. And bye.